Hey guys, I'm back again, and I'm going to be doing my live stream here on the last uh, UH men's basketball road trip in which it was a split. We lost at Irvine, lost, and we won, or excuse me, we won at Riverside. And that was a night and day difference, that that uh, road trip was. And you saw, and from what I saw at Irvine, they subjected themselves to another slow start again. And they had a, and the and the proof was in the pudding because they had to play catch up the whole time. However, UH did cut the gap down to three. That does prove their resilience. But in the end, unfortunately, just did not have a lot of luck. So obviously, we're going to. Have, so obviously, I knew we had to do better. And if you recall in my last video, I had said that uh, that. I found it a little hard to believe, but probably our best chance to get a win was probably over UC Irvine, mainly because we've had a lot of trouble off and on against UC Riverside. But hey, I was proven. I actually had a, looking back on my prediction, I actually thought they might come away empty-handed. But you know what? They proved me wrong, and I couldn't have been happier. <clears throat> if you saw my live stream yesterday, I actually... Uh, stream the last five minutes of the of the road game for the University of Hawaii and they came through with the win. I did, however, misspeak to have a typo earlier because I thought Jovan McClanahan had 21 points. It turns out he had 19. So he had 19. He led the way. But the guy who really came through in the clutch was Bernardo da Silva. He had 18. He wasn't far behind uh McClanahan. But for Bernardo to come through on uh, on uh, defensive purposes, that was key. And I was very, very uh, happy to see Bernardo do that, especially when especially when I don't think he had that great a game against uh, uh, UC Irvine. By the way, we ended up losing the Irvine game 76-68, to 68, and we ended up winning the Riverside game 67-63. But that Riverside game... That win was a giant statement, let me tell you. And I'll tell you, and let me tell you, because Riverside was at the top of the conference at seven and one, and now they're seven and two, courtesy of us. And hey, that was a night and day, and I mentioned it was a night and day difference because for once against Riverside, UH did not subject themselves to a slow start. And that's what, and when you look at the outcome of this, we went 67 63. We built as much as a 13 point lead. And although we only lost the lead briefly in the second half, we responded back. And that made the difference. We never trailed again from early on in the second half. I think we only trailed for something like 20 seconds. But anyway, I would definitely give the, uh, I would definitely give the um, road trip a B as, as a grade overall, but individually for the games, you see Irvine, I would kind of have to give them maybe a B minus, but I would definitely have to give them an A against uh, Riverside because the fact that they were able to come through with, they didn't subject themselves to a slow start. That was step one. And the fact that they were able to keep the lead for pretty much the entire first half, that made the difference. The start made all the difference. And like I said on my last live stream, this is what happens when you don't subject yourselves to a bad start. And UH was able to do that, and they were able to come through with a split. Would I have liked to let them to get two wins? Certainly. But then again, Irvine is a very good team. They're one of the perennial front runners as is uh, Long Beach State and UC Santa Barbara, our next opponent. But we're going to have to bring our A game to go up against UCSB. Now, I do think that we'll win both of those games, <clears throat> but we're definitely going to have to play well against one of the perennial front runners in UC Irvine. The reason why is they're a damn good team. And, uh, Last year, we had to really claw back from a 19-point deficit early in the first half to put on a clinic. And uh, we ended up, 
erasing a gap that possibly looked like against a team that possibly looked like a loss on paper. But what helped us out then was the fact that we forced a lot of turnovers against UC or UC Santa Barbara and here and against UC Riverside, we hustled, we played more efficiently. Bernardo da Silva came out of his shell and had a emphatic game scoring 18. He was one behind Jovan McClanahan. But another guy that I thought really came through clutch, actually two guys, Noel Coleman and Samuta Avea, because Avea had eight points and he had a team high nine boards. And Noel Coleman came through with timely with a timely triple. And I thought for sure that if Coleman was hitting triples, we were definitely we definitely stood a good chance. And on top of that, with Avea showing his defense, he definitely uh, had to carry the flag as team captain with Kamaka Hepa not having a great night because he ended up with just two points. Didn't hit a triple, though, which was a little bit surprising to me. But then again, it could be because that wasn't just wasn't uh, Kamaka's night. <clears throat> but anyway, the fact that, well, it really came down to the last few seconds because we actually were up by two with a few seconds left. And, and UC Riverside had three opportunities to, or actually we were, or no, we were, yeah, we were up by two. They had a chance. UC Riverside had three chances to either win it or, or tie us up. But however, I'm looking at the live stats and uh, what happened was, Jamal Hartwell and, in fact, uh, first off, in a chronological order, uh, Flynn Cameron uh, missed the three, and uh, in fact, uh, actually, no, Flynn Cameron didn't miss a three. It was Jamal Hartwell the second who missed the three with 18 seconds to go, but Flynn Cameron got the offensive rebound and he dished it to Zion Pullen for a layup and he missed it. Then Flynn Cameron tried it, tried a layup that he missed. And as a result, Zion Pullen fouled McClanahan on the rebound and that was all she wrote. And that's what I mean. When you don't subject yourselves to, to slow starts, this is the kind of outcome that you want. So obviously, I would definitely give them an. I would definitely give you H and A because they were definitely uh, on the ball, and uh, and they efficiently responded with their defense, and that's what kept them in the game, and that's what kept them in the lead. And the fact that Beyond Riley was able to hit a triple certainly helped out as well. Cody Williams even came through in the first half with a key bucket, especially with Justice Jackson on the sidelines. <clears throat> and up next is UCSB, as I said earlier. I do think we'll win that one because we do have home court advantage. And if last year was any indication, we should come through with the win if we play well. Because last year we were very relentless and we forced a lot of turnovers. And if we do the same thing then to this season, we should come through with a win. But I like the fact that UH is able to prove me wrong on this road trip because I had predicted that they would lose this game. They will lose both games. And currently they're now, they're now six and two. And, uh, we're not far off of first place, and I hope we can get there. Now, as for Cal State Bakersfield, I do think we'll win that one too. Obviously, uh, Bakersfield last season, they didn't win a lot of games. I think they only won two. But we were able to come through with two wins over them. We won at their place earlier early in the season. 
and Cal State Bakersfield was senior night last season where we bid aloha to Jerome DeRosier, Junior Madute, and Monte Chalina. And Chalina and Madute would, would certainly have been key contributors this season had they chose to stay, but they ended up uh, turning pro, turning professional, and now they're playing elsewhere with Chalina trans, translating to Australian rules football. Jerome DeRosier, there was a possibility that he could return, but unfortunately the NCAA did not allow Ivy League players an additional uh, season, and DeRosier played at Princeton the year before that before transferring to UH for his master's in marketing. So I do think we'll come through with two wins for this home, for this next home stand. Uh, we'll definitely have to play, but we definitely have to play well against UCSB because in my view, Santa Barbara, that's the big question mark because they're leading this. They're leading the standings at this moment. So hopefully we'll win both games. I have a feeling that Bakersfield is in the bag. I believe both. I actually believe both games are in the bag as long as we play well. But anyway, or anyway, that's it, guys. And I'll see you all then. Well, I'm a poner, everyone.